How's it going everybody? Just wanted to do a quick walkthrough of this solar system we just completed on this Airstream Interstate. So starting on the inside, we installed the touchscreen monitor here below the rest of the monitors that were in the rig. This is where the customer wanted it. So looking at the monitor here, you can see everything's working and we're on shore power and our batteries are at 100%. And if you look up here, we also installed a battery heat switch for the heated batteries for the battle born batteries and then on this side your battery voltage meter still works so you can see your battery chassis voltage and you can see your battery main voltage so moving on to the back under this bench seat on the right side here this is where the existing old inverter solar controller and most of the electronics were located so we took out the old inverter and the solar controller and we installed the new solar controller, the Serbo GX monitor system, the lithium battery isolator, and also the battery monitor in this area because the new inverter was way too big to fit. So this actually worked out perfect. So if you look here, we have the Serbo GX monitor system. This is where all the components are going to connect to and show up on the monitor. You can also connect it to the internet and monitor your system remotely. Next to that, we upgraded the solar controller to an MPPT Victron controller. It's also Bluetooth, so you can monitor it on your phone. The next thing we upgraded was the lithium battery isolator instead of the standard battery isolator. This is gonna protect your alternator and your lithium batteries. And this also leaves your boost switch intact on the dash. The cool thing about this isolator is that it'll actually charge your chassis batteries from your solar or from your generator or from your shore power while it's charging your lithium batteries. As long as your lithium batteries are over about 80%, it'll kick this on and it'll start charging your chassis battery at the same time. And then it'll turn off as soon as your charging stops. And then the last thing we installed here was this Victron Smart Shunt battery monitor. And this monitor is Bluetooth and it's also gonna show up on the display screen in the front. One extra thing that we added for the customer that he wanted was an extra outlet here with USB plugs. So moving on to the back of the rig, this is where we installed the Victron MultiPlus 3000 inverter. And we hooked up this inverter so it powers everything in the rig, including the microwave, all of the outlets, the fridge, the air conditioner, just like it would be on generator. So these units are also lithium battery chargers built in. And when you plug in the shore power or generator power, it automatically switches to charging the batteries at a high rate. And you can charge this particular lithium battery bank within about two or three hours if it was completely empty. This will replace your original converter charger and charge three times as fast. So moving on to the roof, there was one flexible 100 watt panel installed from the factory here and it wasn't working very well. So we uh, took it off and then we installed three of these 100 watt rich solar panels and we still have room here for an extra one in the front to add another one. So the original batteries for this van are in the back here, under the van on the outside. The lithium batteries were of course not the same size as the original batteries. So we had to do heavy modifications to make this work and for it to fit under here. But we were able to fit the 270 amp hour Battleborn Game Changer battery with the heater under here. And then we also had to run an extra battery heater switch for the heaters to work. This was a lot of work to complete and this also is kind of a pain if you ever have to access it again. So in the future, I would probably recommend most people relocating the batteries to the inside of the rig, but we were still able to make it happen regardless. So let's head back on inside and let's try some appliances out here. So Roland's finishing up here and then we're gonna go ahead and electrocute him by turning the microwave on. And if we look at our monitor here, you can see our AC loads, which would be the microwaves pulling in about 1400 watts. And if we look at the bottom left corner, you can see it says negative 145A. It's pulling about 145 amps per hour. So let's go ahead and try the air conditioner. So we put a soft start kit on this one, so it should start up pretty easy. So if you want to run your air conditioner from the inverter you're going to need a soft start and that'll help take up some of the load so it doesn't overload the inverter and shut down the system so if we go back to our monitor we'll first see 
the fan kick on, which you see we have 82 watts and it kicked up to 569, 361 here. And that's uh, the fan kicking on. And give it a few seconds, so you'll see the compressor kick on as well. And this is how you know the air conditioner part came on. And there's the compressor. And now we're pulling about 1,100 watts with the air conditioner on, which is about 108 amps from the battery per hour. So the next thing we're going to test here is our shore power charging to make sure our inverter charger part is working. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. Heading back to the monitor, we can see by looking at here, see our shore power just kicked on. So you can see we're pulling about 1700, 1800 watts from shore power. And then our inverter went from invert mode to bulk charging mode. And if you look at the bottom here, it's a positive 99 amps. That's 99 amps per hour. It's charging. So we'll be back up to 100% in no time. Make sure to get your free lithium upgrade quote for your RV at solopowermyrv.com slash free quote.